Well, good morning to all. Thank you so much for being here with us this morning. Just want to wish everybody a happy Hmong New Year. Do you guys know how to say hi in Hmong? No? Nya Zhong. Everybody say it? Nya Zhong. Okay, Nya Zhong. I was trying to teach that to Eli earlier this week, too. He couldn't say. He said Nya Zhu. So, Nya Zhong. Okay? And so a couple of announcements here for us. Um, we do have our Lay Servant Ministry certification course. Uh, this comes on Saturday, January 7th from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. So we'll be going over the spiritual gift course in regards to that. Um, we also have our Christmas Eve service coming up on Saturday, December 24th at 6 p.m. And so please also be here for that. Uh, just let us know uh, for the... The women, the Cal Nevada Hmong women gathering will be at Fresno St. Paul United Methodist Church on February 18th um, at 8 a.m. So just let us know about that. Are there any other announcements at this time? Okay, I don't see any more announcements. And at this time, I would like to welcome uh, Lee up here to lead us in the call to worship. All right, please stand if you're able to for the uh, call of worship. This is the fourth Sunday of Advent, a time to rejoice in the wondrous thing that God is doing. Our hearts are filled with the hope that is coming into the world. The time is fast approaching, not for parties or presents, but for the awareness of God's love and gift to us the gift of Christ's child. Help us slow down, Lord, that we may realize that your gift of love is at the center of our lives and our celebration. Thanks be to God, who again remind us of God's eternal love. Okay. Okay. ไฮเนนอฮะตัวไปเหอก็ทอก็จอกก็ตัวบ้านจุ๊บลีลุงจุ๊บได้ไปโทไปเยอปีไปตึกเก็บไปเหอบ้านจุ๊บทอก็เค
But when the king refused, God would not be stopped. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Look, the young woman is with child and shall bear a son and shall name him Emmanuel. God wants us, even when we aren't sure ourselves. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife, but had no marital relations with her until she had born a son, and he named him Jesus. All right, so we'll be lighting our Advent candle here this morning. All right, well, thank you so much. You guys can go sit down now, okay? And go sit down. It's okay, Chucha. It's okay, Benjamin. I'll pick it up. Okay, and at this time, I'd like to invite our praise and worship team to come up here, please, for our praise and worship. this from you? Can I borrow this from you? I'll give it back to you. Doing something different from what we've been doing typically. And so the Mongs will be singing the worship song in Hmong. It, is in, it was handed to, uh, out to everybody here. So they'll be singing it in Hmong. And th for those of us who don't speak Hmong, you'll be repeating after me in English, right? But we have to stay on beat, okay? So, um, so the, the song for the Hmong is Chan Ne Okay, so that's the song. And for the English part, you'll be repeating after me every single line, right? So let's try that. Lift up your hands. Everybody louder, lift up your hands. Come and let us sing together. Lift up your voices. Do not be afraid. Let us praise God. So that's how we're going to do the song. So everybody stand up, please, if you're able to, and join us for our first worship song. Can you turn that a little bit higher, please? All right, everybody put your hands together. When we say lift up your hands, we're going to lift up our hands, okay? Can you start that over? A little bit louder, we can't, we can't really hear it up here. There. There, put your hands together. Hey. 
Lift up your hands. Come and let us sing together. Lift up your voices. Do not be afraid. Let us praise God. Lift up your hands. Come and let us sing together. Lift up your voices. Do not be afraid. Let us praise God. God is the Lord of all creation the heavens and the earth God is the one that is alive He lives forever and we're going to lift up our hands okay lift up your hands come and let us sing together lift up your voices do not be afraid let us praise God lift up your hands come and let us sing together Lift up your voices. Do not be afraid. Let us praise God. God is the one who loves. He gave his only begotten son. Jesus is born. He took away our sins. We are now free. We're going to sing the English part together. Let's just all sing. Praise the Lord. He is holy and mighty. Praise the King. He is holy and mighty. Praise the Lord. He is holy and mighty. Praise the King. He is holy. Mighty, lift up your voices and praise Him. Humble your hearts before the throne of grace. Lift up your voices and praise Him. He is worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Lift up your hands. Come and let us sing together. Lift up your voices. Do not be afraid. Let us praise God. Lift up your hands. Come and let us sing together. Lift up your voices. Do not be afraid. Let us praise God. next song that we'll be singing it's an old Hmong hymn about the new year and so the Hmong new year literally translated into English means to eat 30 not big deal right to eat 30 and so it gives us 30 days of celebration for the Hmong new year usually in the old country usually takes place around thanks around November here in the states I mean it starts around October and then it varies from city to city and things like that so we'll be singing the song not big deal big Hmong not big deal which means we eat 30. We celebrate New Year together. So, next video, please.
may all be seated at this time. And this last hymn here is also a very old Hmong hymn, and it's a hymn of reflection about the new year. And so during this song, during the piano piece, uh, we ask that all of you just kind of reflect upon the old year. Just give thanks to God for the past year, for 2022, and also lift up your prayers for God for 2023. Whatever it is that's in your heart that you want to speak up to God, just lift that up to God. Go ahead. You have the third video? Okay. Give us a sec. Rejoice always, pray constantly, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. E. Pelsamoke, Chongchin, Legotong, Tongkitoli, Halino Hatam, Mayochu, Nanu Jongsha, Mayochu, Tabanchu, Chichi, Chiku, Zayo, Mitao Gates on Yang, Hatao Jongla. May your chu or want you chung. Want you, Sako me, Totu, Kuntu, Yesu, Keto, Gong Itsu Sham, Lo Otino. Let us all be in prayer. The big consumer of what you can get on the pollution, she put your watch. Don't listen to your thing. Shout 
Please stand with us if you're able to lift up your hands. We're going to sing, God, we give you thanks for just being with us last year. Okay. Praise the Lord and thank God so much for just blessing us throughout 2022. God bless you all. You may be seated. Okay, the Old Testament reading is in Isaiah chapter 7. Verse 10 through 16. So ขออวกุจิตอกุจิตอชันเดจิงจิตอจอมเมชะฮะหลอเมจิงยออวกัววะจือจิชะฮะอวจิตอชันเดฮะหลอยอเลนเดตุจือยออวอียาจิจิงจ
he will be eating curds and honey when they know when he knows enough <coughs> to reject the wrong and choose the right. For the boy knows enough to reject the wrong and choose the right. The land of two kings you dread will be weighed to lay, laid waste. The word of God for the people of God. Okay, at this time, I'd like to welcome the English choir.
Now it is time, it's time for us to share our joys and our concerns. Now you can hear me. Uh, my dear friend of mine, Joan Jacobson, who used to be coming to our church, um, and Timothy's uh, stepmother, uh, died yesterday at, uh, over at uh, Pacifica. And so I just want everybody to know that and to keep her family in their prayers. It's been a, a rough couple of weeks as she was letting go and, and moving on. Um, but then there's a, a joyous thing. I talked to Linda Prendergast yesterday. It was her birthday, and she's doing well and uh, said to say hello to everybody. I'm sure you, most of you remember her. And then another sad thing, uh, my daughter Robin, um, uh, her best friend, they walked every morning, and they walked together on Wednesday morning, and Tanya is her name. She went home and had a fatal heart attack. So everybody, no matter what age you are, do what you want to be doing right now, because you don't know. It can happen so fast. So. Robin, a very good friend of Robin's. She's only 59. I mean, only 59. Gosh. Anyway, so uh, Robin is very sad. She lost her step stepmother and also uh, Tanya. And then, but the biggest thing is my son Timothy is visiting from <laughs> Texas. So he's here for the next couple of weeks. So I'm enjoying that. So that's, that's the best thing. Thank you. Lord, hear our prayers. You know, we're celebrating a lot of good things here and, and relative peace and comfort. But on the other side of the world, there's a whole country that is basically being shoved in the darkness and cold. And we need to pray for the people of Ukraine. We also need to pray for the people of Russia because they're also losing sons and daughters and fathers and mothers. And hopefully we can open their eyes to the foolishness of their leadership who's causing all this damage and is leading us, the whole world, onto the brink of, of a war that is totally unnecessary. So you know, let's be joyful for what comfort we have here and what peace, but let's be mindful of those that do not. Thank you, David. Prayers. I'm issuing an invitation. Jim and I are having an open house on Sunday, December 25th from 3 to 6. Please stop by, have a cup of cheer, gab, stay as long as you want, or come in and out. You're all welcome. Thank you, sir. start with my joy. My sister Nancy, her cancer is in remission. She's doing really well. And I'd like prayers for my son Brendan, who is really struggling with his PTSD right now, and the VA cannot get him into counseling for at least six more weeks. Prayers for Brendan. Anyone else? Let us pray together. Vanchipejon Lord, we thank you so much for this day as we gather here together to celebrate our Hmong New Year, Lord. We thank you for the joy and the peace that we receive from you, the blessings for this past year, Lord. 
We pray that you continue to be with us, continue to bless us, continue to, to just grow us in our faith as we proceed here into this new year here in 2023, Lord. That you'll be with us every step of the way. We are confident that you will be with us, Lord, that you will never let us go. Lord, at this time, we also lift up all of our prayers today, all of our joys and our concerns up to you. We ask that you hear our prayers, Lord. For those who are battling with illnesses, for those who are living in war-torn countries, Lord, we lift them all up to you. And even though we come here together today to celebrate with so much joy and so much peace in our hearts, we are mindful of those who are suffering throughout this globe, Lord. And we pray that your grace continue to be with them. And so we pray the prayer that your son Jesus Christ once taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom comes, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Okay, Lucia, I know you're on Gopji saying.
Okay, so um, the song that my mother-in-law Ka will be singing reflects um, Luke chapter 6, verse 47 through 49. Everyone who comes to me and hears my words and does them, I will show you what he is like. He is like a man building a house who dug deep and laid the foundation upon rock. And when a flood arose, the stream broke against that house and could not shake it because it had been well built. But he who hears and does not do them is like a man who built a house on the ground without a foundation, against which the stream broke, and immediately it fell, and the ruin of that house was great. I want to yeah. Hello? ยังรู้จักเนาะยังจะรู้ยังจะหัวว่าลูกกูลูกกาช่องช่องไก่ปลาจุดช่างจุดปลาจุดตัวยังหาเลยเนาะตาตัวกูเอ่อน้องกูต
นจูจางเตาจวนลูจวนจอนางนางลูนางจอจวนหลอกลูเจโกเพงโอเจยอนเจโตโกลงตู้เธอจอตู้เจเจเต้าเกี่ยทางเย่งเกี่ยเต้าจงตู้หลังจอตู้จุดเจเกี่ยเต้าตู้เก่าชีทีเอ็กินเจเก่าตัวเจตาเอ็กเขาลูกคนเจเจเขาเดาหัวเกี่ยเต้าตู้เก่าชีทีเอกิจเกิดตัวจิตเจ้าเขาลูกคนเจเจเขาจุลศรีเจ้าเองอ๋อมัวลูกจีก็เป็นปุ่นจูจังตัวเองนางลูนางจ้อจวนจวนลูจวนจ่อนางลาลูกจีก็เป็น我愿住连住难老苦难，啊，都难找，都出界。我到吉兰罗吉路上，啊，都难了找，都出界莫路界过平。ปนจูจางเตาอ๋อนางลูนางจ่อจวนจวนลูจวนจ่อนั่นเจลูเจโกเพงปนยนจูเจนจูนางลาวก้นชัวเอ๋อตู้นางจ่อตู้ชัวเจเต้าเกลังลอยเกลือชาลอเจงโยเต้ามองตายเกปลูลอเกตัวเนื้อตู้จีย่อสังหาตู้ตู้เกกือโอวังจอโอเจกุยย่อสังขาจวบปีแหลงจงเจงกือเจงชาสุ好吉哦，都吉哟，你上下住住吉古，我吉着我忘。古哟上下住比人中间差住好吉古，我中着我讲罗阿古的拉明白。心足到中人，老的跳。台湾主方光芒，主方主子路Okay, the New Testament reading is in Matthew chapter one, verse eighteen to twenty-five. Kung yung kay wala kung yung hul pong the wala kung cha the matay chong yung kay kung yisun ni kung chi. Sang kung Yesu kito liu yo mo le no, yo say. ตู้สู้ใครไม่ลีกูยอเยซูนาเลอแต่ชีอันเดียวอัดตู้เจงชีตัวชีอยู่ไม่ลีตัวเส้นเส้นมีนัวลูเดวันจูปลีตู้เล่าหูเลอยอเสียอีตู้ตัวเนี่ยยันยันเนื้อชีสัจยาไม่ลีปงเจมัวเนื้อจะสัจตาเนื้อยัวที่ขอเกะใครเดาหาจอไม่ลีตู้ยูเจ头女正在打杀猪，让得都住，一都地住道路就是胡金波说的女孩子。要说，古人的未来家家，过去早在梦中买了
ตัวขอมาลีที่เซ็งตูมีโยนเดียวลุงเดียวว่าจุดปลิดตัวเขาหูมาลีโยยูอีตุมิตูฮะก็โยตีนึงเบหัวเยซูตัวขอนึงโย
often involve young children. And so that's the first character in, in Isaiah chapter 7. The se- second character is King Pekah, who is the king of Israel, the king of the northern kingdom. Now he, he was not the rightful king t- to the crown, but he actually killed the actual king, and he took the crown. We can read that in 2 Kings chapter 15, verse 25. And then the third person is King uh, Razan, which is the king of Aram, or the king of Syria. Uh, Aram is the native name for the region. Syria is the foreign name that's given to the region. Now, of course, in this, there's also Isaiah, Isaiah the prophet, who prophesied around 740 B.C. to about 700 B.C. in the southern kingdom of Judah. Now, the backdrop of the story here took place around 730 B.C., which is about 8 to 10 years before the fall of Israel, the northern kingdom, to the Syrian Empire. And the Syrian Empire at that time, they were expanding in power. And so we know from uh, 1 Kings chapter 12, around the year 975 B.C. or so, that the northern kingdom, Israel, was divided into the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom, which the northern kingdom is Israel, the southern kingdom is uh, Judah. And they, they uh, had that division under Solomon's son. After t- King Solomon died, King Re. Hoboam took over the throne, and the country, the nation, was divided into these two different kingdoms. And so, this is, so this, these verses here are taking place about 250 years after the death of King Solomon, after the division of the northern and um, southern kingdom. So this whole chapter here was written in the context, actually, of international politics during the 8th century in the Bible. And so Israel and Syria, they went... And, Israel and Syria, like I said at that time, Syria itself was expanding in power. And so Israel and Syria, they wanted to form an alliance with Judah. So that way they can defend themselves against the Syrians. Well, Judah did not want to do that. Instead, Judah had a different plan. They had a different plan. and Their plan was to form an alliance with Assyria itself. And so um, Israel and Assyria's plan was to, and so, so Israel and Syria, they, they were unhappy with this, and so their plan was to defeat Judah. They wanted to go into Judah, capture Jerusalem, defeat Judah, and then place their own king on the throne to form this alliance of the three countries, of the three nations, to go against Assyria as Assyria was expanding at that time. And so right here in these chapters, the people of Judah, they were in fear for their kingdom because they were being attacked by Israel and Syria at this time. And so they were in fear of their kingdom because they were definitely outnumbered by these two, two nations that, that allied together to, to try to beat Judah. And so it is in this context that Isaiah was sent to God to speak to the king of Judah, which is Ahaz, to provide him the assurance that this plan was not going to, this plan was not going to be successful that Syria and Israel was not going to to be able to defeat Judah. And that's why we read in verse 7, if we go before this, in verse 7 it says, uh, yet this is what the sovereign Lord says, it will not take place, it will not happen. And so King Ahaz here was being presented with a question by the prophet Isaiah. And Ahaz was facing this historical, this very important decision of his time. And that decision would determine the state of his kingdom, the future of his kingdom. It would determine the state of his own people in Judah. And his decision could also potentially put an end to the reign of the lineage of David, the house of David in Judah. Now that's one of the strengths about Judah. The reason why Judah was able to survive 200 years longer than Israel was able to survive because Judah had the lineage of David ruling on their throne in Jerusalem. And so it is here that Isaiah asks Ahaz to take a stand for the faith. And, and that's where we go to verse 10 to verse 11 where it says, the Lord spoke to Ahaz. Again, the Lord spoke to Ahaz. Ask the Lord your God for a sign, whether in the deepest depths or in the highest heights. And so even though Ahaz was being unfaithful throughout his reign as the king, even though he was being unfaithful to God, during this difficult situation, God came to him, and God offered him this grace and mercy. God was revealing grace and mercy to this unbelieving king. And God is basically saying here, I am still here for you. And you're going through this, you have to make this decision here, but I am still here with you. And you can ask of me anything, and I will give it to you. You know, oftentimes we don't give grace to other people. 
We often judge them by their past, or we judge them by what the things that they've done before. But we see here in these passages here that God does not ch- charge or judge us for our past at all, but he judges us exactly for what we do at the very moment that he is calling us, the, at the very moment that he speaks to us, at the very moment in which he offers his grace to us. And when we're at the end of the rope, when we have the most important decisions in our lives to make whether we've been faithful to God or not, God remains faithful and he reveals himself to us. And that's what he's doing here to King Ahaz. And so I want us to always remember that God is always going to be there with us. No matter how many times we have failed God, that he's always going to be here with us. And this new coming year here, we can have faith that God will continue to bless us. And he's willing to renew us here in this coming year. You know, many times when, when, when uh, we start the new year, we all comes, uh, come up with all kinds of resolutions and things like that. Oftentimes we don't, we, don't, we don't even put those resolutions into practice. But I want us to ask ourselves that our new year resolutions, the things that we have in plan for this coming year, what does it have to do with the will of God? Does it fall within the will of God? Because everything that we do, all the plans that we have, all the re- resolutions that we may have, and many of the re- times the reason why we're, we fail to accomplish these things is because we have yet to live it up to God. We have yet to share it with the church. And in order for us to be able to do these things is that we are to lift up all of our plans, to lift up everything up to God for this new coming year here. And for me, my personal goal for this new coming year is for me to really rethink about doing church. I want us to be able to restore the church once more. I want us to really be able to make the church once again the center of of our lives. I know not too long ago, probably about 30, 40 years ago when I was growing up, when we got here to this country here, the church was the one that came to, t- to teach us, my family, how to, how to use the, the, the things around the house, how to use the sink, how to use the restrooms and things like that. And, and everything that we did was through the church. Everything that we learned, you know, when we came to this country was through the church. My parents learned everything through the church. You know, the church would take my parents to, to uh, the welfare department and, and, and help them apply for welfare at that time. Whatever, and, and the church would take my father to go to school and, and train him and to work and things like that. So everything was done through the church. And that's what we want to be able to do. Is we want to make the church, once again, the center of our lives. We want to understand that the church is our family. Scripture says that we are God's household. If we want our children to grow grow up knowing God, we must be a family. We must be one family. We can't be these two different churches or anything like that. We may have different ways of worship. We may have different tastes of music. We may have different languages. We may have different clans, different last names. But all of these things cannot get in the way of us being one church. Because we are one church. We are one family. This, this here is not Pastor Chang's church. It's not that pastor's church or that pastor's over this, their, their, his church. You know, this here is not the Anglo congregation or the Hmong con- congregation. If we separate ourselves like that, we will never grow a healthy church. A healthy church is a church that sees itself as one family. And so whether Pastor Chang is here with you, whether another pastor is here with you, we have to see ourselves as one church. Whether we love traditional music, we prefer traditional music, we prefer organ, we prefer the piano, or whether we prefer contemporary music, whether we are singing in Hmong or we're singing in English, these things are not the important thing. The important thing that we are united together as one church glorifying God together. And this is what we need to do is to rebuild and rethink the way um, we do church and of course the way that we, we worship God. The growth of a church starts and ends with the way that we worship God. Is our worship service, is it focused on glorifying God or is it simply focused on satisfying our preferences? Are we giving our very all when we worship God? You know? Are we giving everything that we can to God when, when we um, worship God? God. And so just as Ahaz was facing with a decision for the future of his own kingdom, today we are also being faced with that decision as we go into the future. We're faced with the decision of the future of our church. How are we going to approach the future of our church? I am so excited that we have so many children, and I always talk about this, is that we have so many children and so many pre-youth, and they have, we can't fail them. We cannot fail our children. We have to have a sense of urgency to work together as a church to disciple our children so they can become the next youth in our church. We can't 
fail of them. We can't, you know, just, just leave them without teaching them about the Bible, without discipling them. And so Ahaz's response, of course, Ahaz was not being, being, being faithful to God here. On the surface, it seems that he was being faithful, but Ahaz's response was basically, I will not ask, right? He, he, did, he did not want to seek after God's uh, will. He did not want to know what God's sign was for him. And so the reason for that is because, like I said, Ahaz had his... He has his different plan. He has, he, his plan was to, to, to um, form an alliance with Assyria. So instead of depending on God, he wanted to depend on his political alliances. And so it leads us to what, what Isaiah is talking about is that, you know, he is saying, he's basically saying to, to uh, Ahaz here in verse 13 that is it enough to try the patience of humans while you also try the patience of God? You know, what, what Isaiah is simply saying is that, you know, you, you've, been doing, you've been unfaithful with God all these years to the point in which everybody, all the, all the people are, are already losing their patience with you. Don't take it to the point in which God will also lose his patience with you also. And so let us, you know, I'll just, I'll just, be, I'll just be quick with this. You know, I, I want us to focus on this new year, and let this new year be a year of us seeking God. It, let it be a year of us rethinking about church, rethinking about doing our worship services, rethinking about making, how can we make the church the center of our lives? How can we learn about God? How can we serve in the church? You know, that's really what I, what I really want us to really focus on as we go here into this New year, so, year here. So let, let me just summarize it like this. Just be quick with it. And just summarize it like this for us here today. As we go into the new year, I encourage all of us to renew ourselves. Okay? We need to renew ourselves in the Lord for this coming year. And I want us to make it a goal to commit ourselves to Christian education so that we can grow our faith. You know, a lot of times we think the secular education is enough for us to grow the church, but that's, it's not enough for us to grow the church because it gives us a view without God. And so we need to learn and see the world through a view where there is a God. And so we need to commit ourselves to Christian education. We need to commit ourselves to, to biblical studies. So I encourage us to start out with at least 15 minutes a day by just reading the Bible. And as we learn more about God, we need to develop new leaders in our church. And I'm very excited about all our lay servants who are uh, studying the lay servants program right now. And so we learn, the reason why we learn is because we want to serve others, right? Yesterday I was talking to a whole bunch of pastors and church leaders at a funeral. Uh, there was a funeral in Sacramento, and I was talking to them, and some of them were saying, you know, we learn because we want to compete with each other. And I, I was telling them that, well, no, we don't learn so that we can compete with each other, right? We don't learn, we don't educate ourselves so that I can be better than you or you can be better than me, but we learn because we want to serve one another. And we want to serve one another because we love each other. And so the reason why we learn, it really comes out of that motivation of love. So love is at the center of what we do. That's what the Apostle Paul says, that it is by the love, the mercy of God, that we renew our minds. So that's what we need to focus on, is that when we learn about God, it's not so that we can be better than someone else, but that, but that we can build, help serve another person. And we need to rethink the way that we view the church and our family, in our life, like I said. The church needs to become our family. It needs to become the center of our life once again. That's how we're going to bring our children to the church. That's how we're going to grow our church. We need to commit ourselves to worshiping God and fellowship, being with the church every Sunday. All right? We need to commit ourselves to that every single Sunday, to be here at church to worship God and to fellowship with one another. This is how we grow. And we always need to choose the wisdom of God over the wisdom of the world. And we always need to remember Jesus Christ in everything that we do. No matter what it is that you do, everything is about Christ. He is the sign here that um, God provided to Ahaz and, the, and, and Judah that Jesus Christ is that sign that God is with us. And so Jesus Christ must be in everything that we do. And it's for his glory and it is not for ours. And one more thing that I, that I often say to our, all of our Hmong, um, congregations throughout the, the conference is this. We need to stop depending on grants at the conference. And the reason why I say this is because I see that over the years, these grants have become a hindrance to our faith. And so we don't put the effort into our ministry anymore. We're, whenever we need something, we go ask for grants. And that does not help us grow in our faith. And we need to be able to step up and, um, 
step up and um, be able to do the ministry ourselves. We've been in ministry for 40 years, and um, you know the, the Hmong ministries are probably going to hate me for this, but I've talked, to, <laughs> I've talked to the conference, and we're thinking about putting some kind of restriction on these grants, so that way we can try to help encourage us to be able to actually step up and do the ministry ourselves without actually always year after year after year depending on grants from the conference. And I hope that that will help us build up our faith. And so let the Lord be with all of us. God bless. At this time, we'd like to welcome Caddy up here for the post. Let us pray for the meal that we'll be eating here together. Let us pray. 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 Let us our love for each other. And so we lift everyone here up to you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. May the Lord bless all of you, and Happy New Year. God bless.